he was the one who had found it, so in his mind, he got to open the hatch first. Metal screeched against metal as the top came off and revealed the long-forgotten contents. Everyone crowded around and shook their heads in disbelief. Then, without warning, someone grabbed him and pulled him away. Casper looked at the left path, then the right. One was worn and popular with hikers, the other could barely be called a path at all, and that was the one that he wanted. It was time to explore the Estonian swamp. The lush green pines pierced the sky. Soon Lake Kurtna appeared. As he wandered the squishy perimeter, he noticed some strange markings in the patchy earth. They might have been covered with years of growth, but it clearly wasn't like any shape he had seen before during his many wanderings. He nudged it with his boot, then something else caught his eye. A rope? Was there a sunken boat? He scraped away the mud and tried to pull it. It wouldn't budge. It was already an odd situation, but now he had to tell someone. He ran home and dragged his confused parents out. It was a long until others in the village got a word about it and a large crowd gathered. The men gathered around to see if they could find any clue as to what was apparently submerged in the lake. One of them spotted the rope that was partially buried in the mud. He uncovered it with his hands until he was able to get a grip on it, and then he pulled it with all his might. The wet dirt gave way easily, but it wouldn't budge. Then they all tried pulling. Nothing. There were even a dozen strong men and women, but whatever was at the other end wasn't going to come up without a fight. They pulled and pulled, but with no avail. They didn't have the right equipment or the manpower to unearth the mystery. It was time to call the authorities in. Soon, the deep rumbling of a huge bulldozer echoed around the forest. The help they needed finally had come. They tied the rope to the gigantic machine as its driver prepared himself to move the vehicle forward. Several people also thought to chip in and hold some parts of the rope to help with the hole, but even the extra horsepower wasn't enough. Whatever it was, it had to be massive. Everyone rushed home to grab their own ropes and bring in their own vehicles in. It was eight hours of steel cables, shovels, machine power, and manpower. Even little Casper lent an enthusiastic hand. Like everyone else, he was desperate to see what his discovery really was and committed to however many hours it required. Suddenly, they all felt something move as everyone collectively pulled. Minutes later, the tip of something rose to the water surface. People rushed to reclaim it from the mud, using shovels to dig the dirt from around it to make it easier for the bulldozer to drag it out. At last, the mysterious thing finally revealed itself. The sun had started to dip below the tree line and everyone let out a gasp as the beast slowly rolled up and out of the water like an algae-covered monster. Some of the onlookers knew exactly what it was and dashed a scrape and hose off the hardened mud on its surface, revealing an enormous open hatch. It had been hours since they had partially hauled the massive metal thing out of the muddy water. Even while their energy sapped away, the men wiped the sweat from their brows and continued to wipe away the layers of mud, revealing an eerily familiar white symbol. With their intrigue driving them on, they had come this far. Now they readied themselves for the final haul. With one last mighty pull, it was finally out. Everyone felt silent as they watched the metal behemoth roll out of the lake squelching and fighting against the heavy mud and streaming torrents of water over the villagers. None of them could quite believe the piece of history they had resurrected. But what was a war tank doing here? That was the question on everyone's mind. What was a World War II war machine doing in a lake in an Estonian swamp? In the middle of nowhere? Jasper sprinted up to look inside. This was a once-in-a-lifetime event and he would not miss it. Through the water, he saw something shiny. Mom, are those big bullets? Casper felt strong arms pulling him off and dragging him away. Get away from that! His mom yelled. There was still ammunition rolling around in the cabin. The tank was in amazing condition, so there was a chance till the shells could be dangerous. It wasn't long until they heard the wailing of sirens. A camouflage truck and men in combat gear rushed out of the armored vehicles and towards the mud cake. Someone must have called the authorities as soon as they saw what was inside. Everyone stood still and dead quiet, wondering if they were in trouble. One of the officers came up to Casper. You found it? The large man asked. The boy gave a small, scared nod. The man smiled. I'm impressed. Well done. The soldier looked around at the villagers and said, We need you to step back while we make sure it's safe. And between the army and the internet research, the answers to the mystery finally emerged. 
It took two weeks and every available hand to bring the tank completely out of the lake. The team managed to hold a gigantic machine far up the bank enough so people could go around and take a closer look. Many took photos off and with the major historical find. But how had a Russian-built tank with German markings ended up there? Experts confirmed that it was indeed a war machine, a Soviet-built T-34-76A to be precise. The 7-metric-ton vehicle was the prime element in the Soviet army in their battle against the Germans. Aside from being underwater for an astounding 56 years, they discovered another amazing detail about the symbols and numbers painted on its side. This particular tank was thought to have been captured by the enemy and repainted with their own symbols. Even though it was a capable machine that could navigate all kinds of environments, the main theory is that the Germans dumped it so it couldn't be retaken. The next astounding step took place in the Gordodenko Museum. Another curious detail about the tank was that it didn't seem to have any damage at all. While some of the metal on the surface had eroded slightly from the decades of being underwater, the Russian war machine appeared to still be in good condition. In fact, it was so intact and looked so very solid that they couldn't help but hope that it still worked. Experts revealed that the pristine condition that the tank was found in was thanks to the low oxygen levels in the marshy bog area that became its watery grave. These conditions helped to preserve the metal while minimizing any corrosion. Everything was still intact, as if the metallic beast had been sunk a year ago. But was it still operational? During the restoration, curators were amazed when they found that they were able to start the old diesel engine without needing any spare parts at all. They also recovered a total of 116 pieces of ammunition, and experts were even able to answer the burning question of why the tank was located in that particular area. The Eastern Estonian Narva Front was the location of some intense battles. Around 100,000 soldiers perished and more than 300,000 were wounded. The fighting force migrated and endless tanks and soldiers poured into the narrow swampy area. The final of the battle took place on August 3rd. Huge quantities of Soviet armor and artillery attacked the German positions, but until August 10th, not much had changed. It was in the summer of 1944 that German troops, during the Battle of Blue Mountains, captured the Soviet trophy tank. What makes this find extremely rare is that the tank had a fight for both the Russian and German sides during World War II. However, it was sent to its watery grave just six weeks later. On September 19, 1944, the Germans began a retreat along the Narva front line and deliberately dumped the tank. The German army was unwilling to submit anything and destroyed what they couldn't use. The old T-34 is now on display for everyone to see at a war museum in the Korodenko village, a priceless artifact that had been found by a little curious boy.